Welcome to all of our high school students that are present today in, our com in this conversation. Um, I want to thank you for taking the time for joining us and for being part of this dialogue. Our goal today is to keep you as inf well informed as possible. Si hay algún estudiante que no habla inglés y necesita que yo le informe alguna parte de la presentación hoy en español, por favor incluyan en la, la preguntas que necesitan traducción de, de la información si están aquí y no hablan, no hablan inglés. Solamente para los estudiantes porque este, una, este es una, un evento solo de estudiantes, no de adultos. Um, I was just translating that if anyone needed um, Spanish uh, elements of the presentation in Spanish because we have sp students that don't speak English, so please let me know. But this forum is mainly focused for students, not adults. So we ask that if any questions are added to the um, Q&A, that they only come from students, not from adults. Um, to begin, I just want to thank all of the high school uh, students, as I said, for joining us in this conversation. The same way that we um, provided updates to your parents, community members, and, um, and many others about reopening, we thought it would be important to have you as part of the conversation because we want you to understand what some of the changes are and what this new experience is going to look like in this new academic school year um, for you as well as other adults that are going to be supporting you. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Dr. Alexandra Estrella. I am the new superintendent of Norwalk Public Schools. I usually go by Alex and I'm hoping to get to know you soon as um, we start school September 8th. I'm looking forward to visiting all of the schools and um, having an opportunity to say hello as, you, as we welcome you to the new academic school year. Um, this session is approximately 45 minutes. I'm going to share my screen so that we can walk you through some of the pieces that we think are important for you to know as students coming in um, to the schools September 8th. So the first thing I'm gonna do is walk you to um, the day in the life of a student that is in person. And I'm then gonna work, walk you through the day in the life of a student that is virtual, but it's also going to be a similar experience because we are in a hybrid for those students that, um, for all of us who will be transitioning from in-person to um, remote learning throughout the week. So we're gonna start the day off with Malik, a ninth grade student in a general ed class. And Malik is going to board the bus um, early in the morning to be in school by 8.30. I'm gonna have Sandra Fahils and Dr. Costanzo uh, um, speak a little bit about um, what getting on the bus will look like this year, which is very different than what you have been ex experiencing in the past. Hey everybody, my name is Sandra Feyoes and some people may know me as Mrs. Fey. I actually think that some of my Brookside students are going to be freshmen this year. So there might be some of you guys in the audience and I can't wait to see you guys in your new high school setting. And right now I'm just going to talk to you guys about getting on the school bus. So um, Obviously, it's going to look a little bit different. There's only going to be half of you guys going to school at any one time. So the, the buses are not going to be as full as they were last year. In addition to that, everyone's- I just want you to know that they're saying that they're having a hard time hearing us. So I think oh. we might have to speak up, I'm sorry. That's okay. So let me try that again. So half of you guys will be going to school and the other half will be participating virtually. So because of that, the buses are going to be um, less full. Um, in addition to that, you're gonna be wearing a mask uh, as you enter the bus. So as you're approaching your bus stop, you should be wearing your mask because you just wanna make sure that your mask is on at all times, especially because there might be other students at the bus stop. And you wanna give somebody that's in front of you some distancing so that you guys are not all piling up waiting to get into the bus. 
The bus will also board from the back to the front. You're going to have an assigned seat, and you will notice that if you're one of the first kids that gets on the bus, that your seats will be closer to the back. This prevents us from having a lot of people sitting in the front as kids are going down the aisle to find their seat. Um, so that's really the bus. Uh, you'll have an assigned seat. So those of you guys that used to get sort of like courtesy bus, uh, which means you probably hopped on the bus even though it wasn't necessarily your bus, you will no longer be able to do that because you are actually getting an assigned seat and we have to make sure that we're keeping our bus numbers down. Um, so you will notice that somebody will be on the bus to help remind you of these safety features. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Then um, once you are safely on the bus, you will then transition to your school at approximately 8.30. And once you arrive, you will immediately report to your um, first block, which at that point you will engage in your coursework between block one and block two. Within those blocks, you're going to have an opportunity to have a break a mask break to make sure that you can um, have some release time because I know wearing a mask is not easy. So we wanted to make sure that you had opportunities for break. You will then um, transition into um, advisory around 11.17 to 11.37. And remember, this is just an example. Your schedule might look a little different depending on your coursework and, and um, how the schedule fluctuates for you given, given your particular um, course needs. Then uh, around 11, uh, 11.47 and um, 12.17, you will go um, and have your lunch, which will give you another opportunity for a mask break because you will take off your mask um, while you're eating. And then you will transition to block three and four. At the end of block four, at around 3.15, either you'll get on the bus to go home or you will transition to after school activities, either um, extracurricular activities, sports and other activities. During the after school activities, you will probably be joined by students that might be learning virtually for that day, but might, will be coming back to school to engage in after school activities. Now, if you are in a distance learning model, um, either 100% of the time, or on a day that you are learning um, remotely, you will start your day off with breakfast. At around 8.30, you will log into your computer, get your space ready to get started in your learning. Then um, at around 8.30, you will transition immediately to block one, as well as um, move towards block two because you'll have that, um, the early morning classes between 8.30 and 11.17. Then you will have your advisory group at 11.17 to 11.37, which will then follow by Malik. Um, for instance, in this case, Malik will have lunch at 11.37 to 12.17. One of the things I want you to notice, though, is that when students are having mass breaks, you'll have a technology break. Right, so that gives you an opportunity to get off the screen, take a break, walk around, do what you need to do. And then you will, after lunch, transition into um, blocks three and four. You will have in between tech breaks to help you um, alleviate and, and have some time to move around and do other things. And then at around 3.15, your school day ends. For high school, at that time, you would then either get on the bus or find a way to come to the school to engage in your sports and extracurricular activities. If you are not in, uh, participating in any of those pieces, then obviously you would um, stay home or if your parents have other things for you to do, you will do those things after 315 because your day would be concluded. Now, uh, we have uh, Mr. Scott um, Herowitz with us. For, um, Scott, do you want to speak a little bit about the schedule for us? Uh, sure, Dr. Estrella um, and everybody else. Hope everybody's doing well and looking forward to seeing you next week. Um, I did just send out something to all students and to all families that reflects uh, the schedule and the way it's going to work. 
Um, and just, you know, for clarification, we're going to continue to have A days and B days like we've always had in our, in our rotating block schedule. Um, but then each student has been assigned to a group of students. So um, I think uh, Alpha and Beta are the groups. And, and depending on what your last name is, um, you're, you've been assigned to one of these two groups. And then um, what will happen is each group of students will come in to school for two days in a row. So you'll do your A day schedule your B day schedule. And then for the following two days, you'll be remote learning. And the group that had been remote learning for the first two days would then come into school and do um, two days of in-person learning. So there's there's a, a calendar that kind of explains to you which day, which group is gonna be in on which days. Um, and that's to, to just to help everybody know, you know, um, to clarify that, because I think that's been a big question on the minds of students. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know, Ralph, if Reginald is on uh, with us or any of the other, Julie and, um, oh my God, I lost her name. Karen. Um, Karen um, is uh, with us. I don't know if they want to add anything that they would like to highlight around the schedule and their program. Um, I currently don't see them, but if you guys are in here, please raise your hand so I can. Uh... Okay. So if, if they if they show, um, if you see them later on, um, let me know and we can add them to the conversation. Thank you so much, Scott, um, for that update. And this is just an example of what the week, the different months will look like. But as your principal stated, you will get this information if you haven't done so already, um, so that you understand um, the expectation. Um, I just want to go over. Um, some of the highlights in terms of the day in a life in more detail. I'm going to turn it over to Sandra and um, to Frank to speak to um, some of the, the factors that we put in place in the classroom that are going to be really important for you to know about as we transition into this new year. Okay, thank you, Dr. Estrella. Um, so as you've heard already, your, your classrooms and your school will be operating at a much, much lower density of students. Um, right off the bat, 50% of students <clears throat> will not be in the building at any one time. Um, and so it's going to look a lot different in your classroom, in hallways. Uh, classrooms are going to be operating at 50% less. So classroom of 24 students, you're going to expect to see about 12 or so students. Also keep in mind that about 27% of high school families that completed the survey opted for full remote. So the 50% we're talking about is already from um, a lower number of over total students. Desks are going to be separated by six feet or more. Dining is going to look a little bit different at the high school level um, than it has in the past at the high school level. And then also um, from what you would expect <clears throat> at any point in the past. So incoming ninth graders, you don't really have a whole lot to compare it to. <clears throat> Excuse me. You haven't been, um, in a high school before, but you're going to, you're going to find that there are four or five different, um, satellite areas for which there'll be a cart. There'll be four or five menus, menu items that you can choose from. You'll be able to select that, that meal, um, and eat that meal eat either in that little sat satellite area around that, um, cart, a large cart, or, uh, there'll be some areas inside um, the cafeteria and outside the cafeteria, even outside the school. Um, I believe at both of the campuses now will have some option for outdoor dining. Um, and so you'll have these options available to you. Um, and uh, it, it's going to look just transform different from what you've experienced in the past. If you have been in high school before, you won't be waiting in lines. You won't be um, going through um, seeing the cashier and checking out the way you have in the past. Um, transitions will be different in a few ways. There'll be far fewer students in the hallways as you're passing. And the passing time, you're accustomed to five minutes to get from one class to another. Um, while that will still be the case, everybody won't be given that same five minutes to go from their current class to the next class. The window for transitions is being expanded to 10 to 15 minutes. 
So while you'll still be expected to get to your next class in five minutes, that will be part of a three-part phase um, for which students will be going from one class to the other. That's going to further reduce the number of minutes or the number of people in the hallway at any one time. There'll be signage on the floors in the hallways um, so that people are going in one direction. And um, it, it's going to lo look and feel a whole lot different and for good cause um, because we're, we're looking to keep you healthy and safe throughout the year. Thank you. Um, and some um, students are asking when they will receive their programs. Um, uh, Scott, would you like to answer that question? Sure. Um, schedules are being finalized right now. Like there's still some little tweaks that are going on to make sure everyone's, everyone's fully scheduled. And I think those will be made live on PowerSchool either um, tomorrow or, or maybe Thursday. I can't remember the exact date, but students will know their exact schedules um, by, by the end of this week for sure. Scott, I believe it's Thursday, so. Thanks, Ralph. Thursday then. And the other question is around PowerSchool, Ralph. When will PowerSchool be activated? On Thursday. That's when we'll be able to see their schedules. It's, just, uh, it's the same thing. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and the other question, Frank and Sandra, is will buses be available for those who need to get to and after um, school activities for, distance for those that are in distance learning? Um, yes, my understanding is that um, there would be some transportation provided uh, for students who are remote on those days to participate in uh, the after school um, athletic or uh, band activity that might be occurring that afternoon. Thank you. So that gives you kind of a sense of some of the safety parameters that we're putting in place as well as what a day in a life um, for a student will look like um, that I think is it, are essential in terms of the work we need to do. I also want to talk to you a little bit about the masks and um, what are the expectations around masks because I know that's one of the things that um, we have to make sure we practice and keep in place to, to keep us all safe. I'm going to unshare my screen right now. And I'm going to ask my team to put on their masks and I'm going to ask you to raise your hand or thumbs up if you believe the person that I name has an appropriate mask. So we're going to start with Dr. Gurevich, um, Yvette Gurevich. Um, can you unmute yourself, Yvette, and say something so that you come to the front of the screen? Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to see you. So do you believe that Ms. Um, Gurevich is wearing a mask that is appropriate for school? If you believe that they, she is, do a thumbs up or raise your hand. And Ralph, I'm gonna need your help to see your account. Um, how, how are we looking here? Do you, do you believe that she's wearing the appropriate mask? If you believe so, raise your hand or thumbs up. The hand raising's going up. It's so uh, we've got a, out of 186, we got 25, 29, 33. Um, it's increasing quite a bit. Okay, give it another second. Okay, what, I mean, what number are we at? We have about 49 hands up. So Thank you. Mm -hmm. So for those 49 students, you are correct. Yvette's mask is appropriate for school. And one of the reasons why, like some of you will see some personnel utilizing the ones with the, uh, with the um, clear component is because it's important, especially for our younger children, that they can see their teachers' faces. Um, you might not see that as much at, at the high school level because you're much older and you would understand, but younger children might not. So she's wearing an appropriate mask. Now we have one of our board members as a panelist today wearing a mask, Ms. Um, Di Diana Caprio. Let's have, let's look at her. Diana, can you unmute yourself and say something? Say hello to us. Hi, hey everybody. 
So let's take a look at Diana's mask. If, is Diana wearing an appropriate mask that we can utilize in school? If you believe she it does, thumbs up or hands up. How are we doing over there, Ralph? We're getting a lot of hands up. Um, okay, we're Diana. Already, we're already well, well above uh, Mrs. Gorovich. We're at 75. Interesting. So Diana, our um, current model, yes, is wearing an appropriate mask. So thumbs up to Diana. Now we have Dr. Costanzo. Costanzo. You see, I can't even say it right now. Um, can you please say something, Dr. Costanzo, so that they can see you on the larger screen? My mask is the best mask. So I want you to give me a thumbs up Hands up if you believe Dr. Costanzo is wearing an appropriate mask that you can wear in school. So, Ralph, how are we doing here? Well, we, we've got about 32, 33 people that answered positively. Uh, 34, okay. 35. Interesting. It's the, lowest, it's the lowest amount so far. Okay. So, actually, Dr. Costanzo is wearing a mask that is a no-no. And we're gonna have our health expert, Ms. Joanne Molinowski, tell us why that mask is a no-no. And Dr. Costanzo, take that off and put on the appropriate mask. Thank you. Okay. Dr. Costanzo's mask had um, what's called a respirator valve on the outside of it. So when he breathes out all of his germs, are sh being shared with all of us. So that is not the correct mask to wear in any way, shape or form. What he's putting on right now looks like a surgical mask, is actually appropriate. Um, it, it filters his germs as well as filtering germs coming into him. So that's really the way to go. The respirator masks are definitely not approved by the CDC or the state of Connecticut. That's a no-no. Thank you. So now that we have an idea of what an appropriate mask is or it might look like, the only person in all of our, in all of our panelists so far that wearing, was wearing a mask that was a no-no was Dr. Costanza. Everybody else here is wearing an appropriate mask. Now, one of the things that you're gonna have to be very careful about is when you take your mask breaks, how you take up your mask is just as important as how, when you put it on. So Joanne is going to demonstrate to you, first and foremost, how do you put your mask on, how you take your mask off, and then where do you place your mask when you take it off for your mask breaks? The floor is yours, Joanne. Okay, folks. The, Dr. Estrella was, could not be more correct. The only way that the mask is effective and provides protection is if they're handled, if they're worn, if they're stored and disposed of properly. Cloth masks should be cleaned every day. They should be washed every day. So when you're here, we're using masks that have ear loops. I don't know if you, I'm pretty sure you can see them. What you wanna do is hold your mask by the ear loop. You put it on over your face like this. If you noticed, I have not touched the outside of my mask. Before you do anything, the most important thing is you wash your hands. Wash your hands, keep that social distancing. You can use hand sanitizer as Mrs. Gorovich is holding up. Uh, soap and water is actually the best regular soap and water. It does not have to be antibacterial. Regular soap and water, washing your hands because the friction takes the germs off of your hands, okay? so. We are providing everybody with a paper bag and you can put your name on it if you so choose to. So that would be at your desk um, so that you can store your mask. Because obviously when you're eating, when you have a mask break, you're not gonna be wearing your mask. So the way we do that is um, make sure your hands are clean, remove the mask through the ear loops. If you touch the outside of the mask, there's germs here, okay? So you remove it through the ear loops, just what I've done. So now 
The inside of your mask has your germs in it. The outside is contaminated from the air and everybody you've been around with, sitting with. So what you want to do is turn that inside out, whether you want to do it lengthwise like this, that's acceptable, and put it inside of your bag, or you can fold it widthwise. Either way is correct. And you stick it inside of the bag. Very simple. Just put it right in there. And this way you have not contaminated your desk or the area all around you. Um, perform hand hygiene. That's always important. When you want to put it back on, you open the storage area that you have here. You hold it by your ear loops right here. Notice I'm not picking it up and holding it like this, okay? So you want to put the inside of your mask back onto your face, the clean part where it was before, and put the ear loops over it. We're not going to be wearing masks like this because all of my germs, it's an aerosol. COVID-19 is in the air. It's aerosol. So every time I breathe out, my germs are going everywhere. So if I have COVID, I'm spreading that all over the place. You don't want to wear it like this because again, it's an aerosol, comes out of your mouth as well. Um, you don't want to have it hanging off the side. I mean, I see people everywhere wearing masks like this. This is one mitigating measure that everybody can do very easily. The other thing is you want to keep your hands away from your face. The way you get sick is put your hands to your nose, your mouth, your eyes. That's how the germs get into your body and breathing in and out. So if you're not touching your face, which is most important, that's why we tell you to keep your hands clean. Even if you have gloves, you know, people that wear gloves ha may have a false sense of security because they've just touched everything in their area and they say, well, my hands are clean. Your hands are clean, but your gloves aren't. So it's the same thing. That's why it's so important to keep your hands clean and not everybody needs to wear gloves all the time either. So just keep in mind that you keep your hands clean, put the mask on correctly, do not rub the outside, don't use your mask as a slingshot. These have, have uh, germs on them and you know, don't hang them up around you know, everywhere. I've seen people hang them on the side of their computer you really shouldn't be doing that because it's dirty. If the worst thing that happens that you don't have a place to put your mask, even though we're giving you a paper bag, put it on either a paper towel with the dirty side down, okay? Um, and, and that would certainly suffice. And then throw that piece of paper or that paper towel away. Wash your hands. Thank you. You're welcome. Now I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Ms. Gurevich to speak a little bit about um, the use of plexiglass in some cases. Yvette, we can't hear you. You're on mute. I was just practicing taking off my face mask and showing the students that there are many different masks that may feel comfortable for them. And I would encourage them to try on a few if they can. If they're working with younger brothers or sisters that may not be comfortable, perhaps you want to take a mask and have the children put it on their stuffed animal to get them used to it. Now there may be some children, a student, maybe one or two in the school who may not be able to tolerate wearing a mask because of a severe medical condition. So students may see some alternatives that we want to show them. Their staff, their teachers, or a student may be wearing a, a face shield, which is not quite a, an alternative to a mask, but it does provide some additional protection. In addition, you may see staff or students working behind plexiglass shields. In this picture, I have a large plexiglass shield um, on a, a conference table. I'll be working with someone soon sitting opposite me. I'm wearing my mask. The other person is wearing their mask. 
You'll see I'm smiling at my workstation because I'm wearing the clear plastic mask. And this gives us some additional protection. Um, students may have this on their desks or you may see um, staff using it behind their workstation. So there's lots of mitigating factors. Um, Joanne just shared the mask, the hand hygiene, the physical distancing are the most important, but you may see some other things like the, the plastic face shield or plexiglass workstations. We're doing everything that we can to keep our community safe as we welcome you back to school. Thank you. So one of the things also that is gonna be crucial is how you wash your hands. And we have a mystery person that we're gonna have you kind of figure out who this person is. It's somebody that some of you in high school know. And this person is singing happy birthday to us to show us how many times we have to sing happy birthday to count 20 seconds of hand washing because it's gonna be really, really important that when you wash your hands, not only that you wash it, but that you spend 20 seconds doing it. So please watch this video so you get a sense of what 20 seconds looks like. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you and So that was 20 seconds of hand washing. And I think it's crucial for you to know that it's not only just about washing your hands, but how long you wash your hands to be able to kill the bacteria by disintegrating the proteins in the bacteria. Not in bacteria, excuse me, the virus. And bacteria too. Um, but most importantly, it's going to, I want you to guess for me who you think that person singing was. So in the Q&A, if you could type up really quick, Ralph, can they do that? Yeah, just type it as though it was a question, who they think it is. Type it as it's a question. Who do you think that mystery person is washing their hands? Okay, I see some people might, might know who this person is. <laughs> Kevin Hart, I don't know who Kevin Hart is. Uh-huh, very good. That was Principal Roberts. He did a phenomenal job of cleaning his hands for 20 seconds, and he has an incredible voice. So let's give him a virtual round of applause for demonstrating for us what 20 seconds of hand washing looks like. Um, and we're hoping that as you transition into this new year, when you, every time you utilize the restroom, anytime you have an opportunity, either you use hand sanitizer or you wash your hands for a total of 20 seconds because it's gonna be really important that you do so. Now I'm going to open it up for Q&A so that you have an opportunity to ask some of your pressing questions and I'm gonna have members of the team supporting us in answering these questions. Um, but before we transition to that, I want to give um, our board member, Diana Carpio, an opportunity to um, say hello to all of you. And I don't know if she has some questions she would like to ask us. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad to see everybody on here and seeing all the students that are on here. And um, paying attention and looking forward to the school reopening and having lots of questions. I myself do not have any question for you, Dr. Estrella, or your team. I've been following all your meetings and all the videos and listening to everyone. 
Um, there are families out there that have asked some questions. Um, basically, the students are excited. They're ready to come back. Uh, some of them are worried, but I think with all the information that's been given tonight and other nights, they feel very secure in coming back. I know there's a lot of questions regarding um, individual topics. However, I know we have a short time tonight and with time, all those questions will be answered. And I look forward to seeing everyone around the schools. And if you see me out there, don't be afraid to come up and ask me anything. Thank you. So I'm gonna turn it out to Brenda so that Wenda can um, provide us with some of the questions that are being asked by our students. I know several have been answered already, but I wanna make sure we have an opportunity to answer additional questions. Uh, thank you, Dr. Estrella. There's a few people who are asking about orchestra and music programs. Um, so if somebody could please address that and also chorus um, as well, so. So chorus will not happen in person. Any, any type of chorus will happen remotely because we need to ensure your safety and in-person chorus puts, us, uh, puts you at significant risk because of the aer uh, aerosols being projected as you're singing. In terms of band, um, band will take place um, as well, but if you're playing an instrument, all instruments will be played outdoors. We will not have in, um, instrument playing inside the building for the same reason that we're gonna have choir, uh, chorus or choir remotely because of the aerosol distribution and the risk that that creates for you in getting sick. So any instrument will be played outdoors and those days that you have to be indoors, you're gonna be learning about band history, band theory, but you will not be, or, or utilizing digital um, tools to practice, but not necessarily playing the actual instrument inside the building. Terrific. Um, we, we did get a question similar to the middle school question about the gator style of masks. Um, Dr. Costanzo, can you address that? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so the district at this point in time is only banning the mask that you saw me wearing a little bit earlier in the session, and that's the mask with the valves. Gators, um, we are not able to ban at this point because um, there isn't an official health position on it other than um, it's not the best, it's not the most effective uh, or safe way to uh, cover one's face, but it is better than no covering at all. So the district um, would prefer to see students coming to school wearing um, other masks like the one that Brenda Williams is wearing now or any of the other masks that you've seen on today's presentation minus the one that I had on. Um, a student will not be turned away for wearing a gator mask, but um, uh, there isn't um, much uh, positive evidence uh, to suggest that gator masks are uh, safe and, and, and effective. There are uh, much more safe and effective ways to cover the face than, than through the gator mask. So we're not banning them, but we uh, would encourage people to wear something uh, safer. Thank you. Would you also be able to talk a little bit about um, lockers and backpacks? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, that, that answer is a little bit easier. There is guidance from the CDC and other uh, health department uh, officials that believe that um, lockers are not, um, the use of lockers are not in the best interest of students at the present time. And that's just simply because lockers are adjacent to one another and um, students would be congregating around lockers. Um, there's also a long tradition at the high school level in particular of students sharing lockers with friends um, when it's convenient, if a classroom is outside of a locker on a different floor. Um, and we really want to discourage uh, the use of sharing lockers with other students and um, having people congregate outside of a row of lockers in order to obtain things. So lockers will be um, offline uh, for the duration of the pandemic. And I'll, I'll defer to Sandra um, if you'd like to speak um, as you did um, with the middle schools about uh, textbooks and other items that would be available in classrooms. Well, 
a little bit different than middle school is that you will be going from class to class, but I, I can tell you that the athletic directors have spoken to us at length about those of you guys that will be carrying equipment or anything that is um, heavy and how they are working with each student to designate a space where you can and actually leave some of your things. So I know that doesn't apply to everybody um, on this call, but you will be able to have your backpack and perhaps have a centralized area, maybe your advisory or somewhere where if you needed to leave a textbook and come back for it, um, that you might be able to do that. We have Scott on this call. I don't know if that's been some thought that's been given to um, students leaving things in a certain classroom, but it's definitely something that we can talk about to your principals. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Joyce. Can, can either you or Mr. Hurwitz or somebody else talk a little bit about how Jim will operate this year? Uh, if you'd like, I could address um, what we know about Jim. Um, so, uh, different than, than what we're going to do with other courses, um, students who are remote on a day of gym will actually be working with one teacher. And the reason for that is, it, you know, gym will be outside of the building. Um, that's the only place that we're going to be holding um, active gym classes. And a gym teacher can't take a laptop outside of the building and still connect to the network. So um, anything that's done outside of the building, uh, when students are in person, um, gym classes will be held outside. Um, it will not be, you know, team sports, contact sports. It'll be more fitness, um, things of that nature. Um, we have one of our gym teachers who was working on a curriculum to do uh, walks around campus um, as a kind of a, a fitness activity. So, um, so you know, in some cases, you know, gym will be active at school, um, but but different than what it's been in the past. And for students who are at home, um, they'll be given like a workout of some sort that they will be doing at home. Uh, while the students at school will be doing a, a different type of workout, and it's you know it's 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 good it's gonna it's very like the thoughtful work, but just it's gonna be different, um, like a lot of things this year. Mr. Hurwitz, can you also just address real quick um, what changes students can expect at lunch this year? Where to start with that one? Okay, so. I mean, as, as was mentioned earlier, um, you know, there will be choices for lunch. There's gonna be some really interesting things. There'll be pizza every day. There'll be a Latin dish. Um, there's gonna be a bento box. So students will have a choice, but everything's gonna be prepared in advance. So you're not gonna be standing prepared for you. Everything will be um, prepared in advance. You'll choose the, the item you want. Um, at Brian McMahon High School, we do have some eating areas set up in the cafeteria, but very limited, um, you know, kind of 25 students in each area. And then we also have eating areas set up throughout the building. So like the um, area just outside of the learning commons, um, there's desks out there. We also have all of our courtyards available for, um, for outdoor eating. So when the weather is, is right, students will be able to use the uh, outside spaces. Um, lunch shifts are gonna be small, probably about, you know, um, at most 200 students in any one lunch shift. Um, that's gonna feel different. Um, you know, and, and just kind of, a. Uh, um, I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think what else uh, to, to tell you, but th those are some of the key key ways that it will be different this year. Okay. Thank you. Um, Dr. Estrella, there's a question about the online classes and is that going to consist of us watching the class and doing the same work as the online students or is in, is, uh, in person and online doing the same or separate things? So it's gonna be a synchronous approach. So online and in person will be working on the same tasks and they might be joining groups together, having conversations with one another. You might be in the classroom and you two, with three students and two students might be part of your group that are learning um, from home. So you're gonna have an opportunity not only to engage with the kids that are in the classroom in person, but also with children that are uh, remotely as well. So for example, if you are part of cohort A, you could potentially have children that are working with you in person as well as virtually because those those students decided to work um be in virtual engage in virtual learning throughout the year so you will see you will see that in your classrooms you will have a combination 
of activities that will not only have you and the group that's there in person, but also those that are remote as well. And then do we have any further information about how after school clubs will work or what will be available for high school students? Throw that out for anyone on the call. Um, I mean, I'll, I, I will say this. The intention is that for all um, clubs and other after school activities to happen, um, I don't know the frequency. I don't know what the exact setup is going to be. Um, I know athletics are going through some, some changes right now. Um, and that's going to be contingent on um, some decisions by the health department, the state. Um, but, you know, so, so even athletics are practicing differently right now with smaller groups of students. I think there will be some similar um, differences, so to speak, for after school activities as well. But um, we'll, we'll, we haven't really uh, we haven't really kind of put together a final plan for that. And then we have a few people asking questions about how to make changes if they want to change what their selection um, is in terms of um, in person to remote or remote to in person. Dr. Estrella, perhaps for you. Can you repeat the question again. Um, we have a few people asking what would they do if they want to change their selection. Um, if they were, if they selected uh, remote and now they want to switch to hybrid or vice versa? So that would um, be quite simple. The, the student or, will have their parents contact the school and the school will work with their parents to make the shift from either in person to remote or from remote to in person. And then we have a question about grading. Um, since we did make a change um, in grading to uh, pass fail in some instances in the spring, um, the question is, are we going to continue grading and pass fail at high school or are we going back to a more traditional system? Well, we have a couple of things to consider. Um, the, the board last year passed the policy uh, that was related to uh, concluding the last school year. Um, and there were a number of different grading elements that got factored in at the ele elementary, middle, and high school level. Um, the superintendent at, during the board retreat was um, granted some additional um, authority to make decisions related to policies just like that. Um, and those could be adjustments to any existing policies. So. The short answer is anybody that needs a letter grade for the purposes of applying to a school or a class rank can have one furnished upon request. The last policy that was passed in the spring of last year concerning grades did move um, the grading policy to a pass fail status, but that um, may or may not ultimately be the grading policy that uh, the superintendent, the board, and the policy committee believe to be the best grading policy for the 2021 school year. You have to remember the policy that got passed at the end of the last school year applied really to a situation where we went to remote all at once. Suddenly, um, there was a real learning curve for students and staff. And so all of that was taken into consideration when the grading policy was um, agreed to. And um, I would imagine that the superintendent and the policy committee will want to take a closer look at this going into a new school year in this hybrid model to determine whether or not they want to maintain that same policy or make some adjustments to it. Okay, thank you. And then maybe just one more question because I know we're over time here. Um, if a student is sick on the day that he or she is supposed to be in school, can that student take a class online for that day? They could definitely log on online. Yes. Okay. Well, I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening in this conversation. I hope that um, this helps all of our high school students have a better sense of what to expect in this new academic school year. I know your principals will be providing more guidance and information, especially around your schedules as they be, uh, become uh, more finalized. 
Um, our goal is that by Thursday, everyone will have their schedule and access to PowerSchool to acquire all the information that you need to, to be ready for Tuesday. I'm very excited to, uh, to hopefully see all of you and I'm looking forward to visiting the schools full of life because I feel you are the life of our schools. So I'm really excited about having the opportunity to meet you for the first time, to have conversations with all of you. I'm even looking forward to some of the work um, uh, specifically around equity that we're gonna be doing and sitting with you and having conversations. So um, make the best uh, out of this year. There's a lot of things we're gonna learn. I know it's not gonna be easy, but you are resilient. And as a village, we will make this the best possible year for all of you, especially for our seniors. We're gonna try our very best to make this year memorable. Have a rest, uh, a great rest of your week, and I look forward to seeing everybody Tuesday. Be well.